So what's going on guys, Kade is here and welcome back to a brand new video. For today I will show you the top 3 best ice gauntlet builds for PvP and PvE in New World. So for each and every single build I will explain what attributes, weapon masteries and even weapon and gear perks you want to have. Then what gems and gear you want to use to get out your stats as much damage as possible. Then as well I will show you the best gameplay of me using different weapons so you would know which abilities you want to use first on your enemies and much more. So if all this sounds interesting to you then let's get right into it. So then moving over to the first build which is the best mage class and for the weapons we want to use the void gauntlet and ice gauntlet. And these are the attributes you want to have. So first things first, if you start from level 0 you want to get your intelligence to 150 and then start building your constitution. And around level 60 you should have 300 intelligence and 150 constitution. And last but not the least, for your gear you want to be in the light or medium category, depending on what is your playstyle. So if you decide to go with the light category, then the best setup for your armor is one medium chest piece and then the rest light equipment. Or if you pick the medium category, then the best gear setup is heavy helmet, heavy chest armor, medium gloves, light pants and medium boots. So then moving over to the first weapon which is the void gauntlet and these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first of all you want to unlock both these two perks and then get the first ability called oblivion and then get these two perks. Then afterwards unlock the second ability called the petrifying scream and then get these two perks as well. And now let's move over to the other side and unlock the last third ability called the orb of decay and then get these three perks and that's it. Now from this moment you can unlock all the other perks in whatever way you like. Ok so now let's move over to the second weapon which is the ice gauntlet and these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first of all you want to unlock the first ability called the ice spikes and then get these three perks. Then afterwards unlock the second ability called the ice storm and then get these three perks. Then from here let's move over to the other side and unlock this one perk. And then lastly unlock the last third ability called the ice shower and then get this one last perk and that's it. And now again from this moment you can spend your points in whatever order you want. Ok so now let's go over to the gameplay where I'll show you the best way to play this build and how to get out of your abilities the highest damage possible. So first of all for the void gauntlet we have the first Q ability called the oblivion which creates a circle around you and your teammates inside the circle will be getting 20% damage increase. But on the other hand your enemy standing in the circle will be taking void damage every second. And a really nice thing to do is while standing in the circle do a bunch of medium jumps. And because of the perks we have selected V and any other allies in the circle will be getting plus 15 stamina each jump. So this will give us the ability to dodge more enemy attacks and gain more stamina at the same time. So then for the second ability we have the petrifying scream which when using will unleash a void scream and this will stagger and root enemies in front of you. And then lastly we have the third ability called the orb of decay and you can fire this orb which can go through your enemy and each enemy that it hits it will deal decent damage and reduce their damage observation and then later that orb will come back and heal you for a few seconds. And on top of all this if you hold the right mouse button you can regain more mana but in exchange your health will go down. I would only recommend to use this mechanic if you really are at full health and your mana portions are on cooldown. So then use it for a second or two and you should be good to go. But for non healer builds you should only use it very rarely. So then for the second weapon we have the ice gauntlet and your Q spell is called the ice storm which all enemies standing in it will get damaged and slowed. And the more enemies you hit the higher damage you will get. Then your R ability is called the ice shower which when using will create an ice wall and if a player goes through it it will stun him. And this ability is very useful in chopping your targets. And then lastly the third ability is called the ice spikes which when activating creates this trail of spikes in a straight line which deals damage in AOE range. This ability is very useful and high damage if you use it correctly. And the way it works is that when you use the ability, but if you're too close to the enemy then the ice spikes won't explode with the highest damage possible. So what you want to do is when using the spell and you see that the player is one second away from getting hit, then press your right mouse button and this will detonate the spikes which will deal very high damage. So as far as your ability combinations go for the ice gauntlet when farming mobs or fighting players, the best spell combination to do is place the ice storm aka the Q ability on grouped up enemies. And if you see an enemy stunned then use the ice spike ability and do a bunch of damage. Or another way to set up your ice spike ability 
is to run into the enemy and place the ice shower spell. And if the enemy touches the ice wall he will get stunned. So then you can use the ice spikes and it will be easier to hit the enemy. And then of course for the void gauntlet you want to hit the enemy with the petrifying scream. And then place the oblivion spell and while dodging keep on hitting the enemy. Then when both of these abilities get on cooldown use the orb of decay and then either way switch to the ice gauntlet or keep on using the void gauntlet depending on which weapon deals more normal damage and that's about it. This build basically has two one shot combos. One combo is for the ice gauntlet where you place the ice shower then put the ice storm and then hit the target with the ice spikes. And then the second combo is for the void gauntlet where you stun the enemy with the petrifying scream. And then place the oblivion ability plus auto attack the target and that's it. So then for my last and final conclusions for this build. This void gauntlet and ice gauntlet weapon combination is very high damage and you basically have two different one shot possibilities every 10 to 15 seconds. So you can easily destroy your enemies no matter if it's a player or a pve mob. So then for our gem choice for the void gauntlet you want to get the opal gem. Then for your ice gauntlet get the malachite gem. And then for all of your gear, rings, amulets and everything else use the enix gems. And then on top of all this, to find out the best weapon and gear perks watch this video which is titled Which weapon and gear perks are the best for your build? You can find the link in this video's description or just scroll through my channel. And in that specific guide I will explain how perks work and which ones are the best for your gear and weapons and much more. So in a quick summary. If you are looking for the best and my most favorite one shot ice gauntlet build then this is the one for you so enjoy. So then moving over to the second build which is the one and only ice gauntlet and rapier and these are the attributes you want to have. So first things first, no matter from which level you start using this build you want to get your intelligence to 150 or even 200 and then start building your constitution and around level 60 you should have 300 intelligence and 150 constitution. And last but not the least for your gear you want to be in the light category and the best setup for your armor is one medium chest piece and then the rest light equipment and this will give you the best damage and survivability. So then moving over to the first weapon which is the ice gauntlet and these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first of all you want to unlock all these three perks and then get the first ability called the ice storm and then get these three perks. Then from here let's move over to the other side and unlock this one perk and then the second ability called the ice shower and then unlock the next perk to him as well. And then lastly unlock the last third ability with the next perk. And now from this point you're free to use your points on whatever way you like. So then let's go over to the second weapon which is the rapier and these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first of all you want to unlock right from the start both these two abilities called the evade and repost. And then afterwards unlock both these two perks. Then lastly get the third ability called the fleech. And now let's take a closer look at the left side and get these two perks. And now from this point and onwards you're free to spend your points on whatever order you want. Okay so now let's go over to the gameplay where I'll show you the best way to play this build. So first of all we have the ice gauntlet and your Q spell is called the ice storm. Which all enemies standing in it will get damaged and slowed. And the more enemies you hit the higher damage you will get. Then the R ability is called the ice shower. Which when using will create an ice wall and if a player goes through it it will stun him. And lastly we have the third ability which is basically like an ice block. Which by using you put yourself in a block where players cannot damage you. And you can go off that ice block by pressing the same F key. Or instead press the right mouse button and make it explode. While going off that ice block dealing even more damage to the enemies. So then taking a closer look at the second weapon which is the rapier. And the first Q spell is called the evade. Which by activating makes you invulnerable for a split second. And it can be good in dodging enemy attacks but you have to know how to use it. So then we have the second ability called the repost and it is reflect which means that when you activate it and if the enemy hits you, you will reflect the incoming damage from you to him. So if he does an F ability on you instead of you getting hit, he will hit himself. And lastly we have the Fleech ability, which deals damage and provides a small mobility slash dash spell. So then the simple and straightforward way to attack a player is by using your ice gauntlet and shoot the enemy from a distance. Then as soon as he gets close to you, activate the ice storm ability and go ice block. Then when the enemy leaves the ice storm or the ability runs out, Go out of the ice block and switch to the rapier and depending on the player you can auto attack the target and use the repost ability. 
to reflect the damage or evade his shots. And then when you get your cooldowns back up on the ice gauntlet, or if you're fighting multiple players and you need a second to get distance and heal up, then either way use the ice gauntlet and activate the ice shower, which will create a wall which the enemy player cannot go through. Or instead switch to the rapier and use the fleech ability, to dash into the enemy, so doing damage and at the same time dashing away from him. So like you can see, this build doesn't have one best way to play it. My recommendation is to learn what each ability does and with time and practice you will know what to do against the different players and their weapon types. So with that said, now for my last and final conclusions for this build. This Ice Gauntlet and Rapier weapon combination right now is very strong in 1v1s or even 1vx for open world PvP. I have seen multiple clips where a player using this build could easily 1v2 or even 1v3. So if you follow this guide, you can definitely use this build for solo open world PvP and PvE. And then lastly, a very important part to know for this build is the gems that we are using. So for the Ice Gauntlet, you want to use the Malakai the gem. Then for your Rapier, get the Aquamarine gem. And then for all of your gear, here, get the Enix gems. So basically, if you're not familiar with how this game works, then the Rapier and Ice Gauntlet are two different weapons. One weapon is very good with Intelligence and the other one with Dexterity. But as we mainly have a Intelligence build, and using these different gems, we make the weapon switch from one attribute to another one. So now instead of the Rapier scaling with Dexterity, it scales with Intelligence. And by doing this, we make this build do even more damage and just in general stronger. And then again, like I explained in the first build, to find out the best weapon and gear perks, watch the video, which link I will put in this video description or just scroll through my channel. And in that guide, I will explain how perks work and which ones are the best for your gear and weapons and much more. So what are you waiting for? Try this build out and don't forget to have fun! So then, taking a closer look at the last and final build, which is the Fire Staff and Ice Gauntlet, and these are the attributes you want to have. And no matter from which level you start using this build, you first of all want to get your intelligence to 150, and then get 100 points in constitution. And around level 60, you should have 300 intelligence and 150 constitution. And lastly, for your gear, you want to go with the medium category. And the best gear setup is to have heavy helmet, heavy chest armor, medium gloves, light pants, and medium boots. So then moving over to the first weapon, which is the Fire Staff, and these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first of all, you want to unlock right from the start the first ability called the Pillar of Fire, and then get the next perk to him as well. Then afterwards, unlock the second ability called the Fireball, and then get these two perks. Then from here, let's move over to the other side and get both these two perks. And now let's get the last third ability called the Burnout, and then get these three perks, and that's it. Now from this point you can spend your points in whatever way you like. Okay, and now let's move over to the second weapon, which is the Ice Gauntlet, and these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first of all you want to unlock the first ability called the Ice Spikes, and then get these three perks. Then afterwards unlock the second ability called the Ice Storm, and then get these three perks. Then from here, let's move over to the other side and unlock this one perk, and then the last third ability called the Ice Shower, and then get this one last perk, and that's it. Now again from this moment, you can spend your points in whatever order you like. Okay, so now let's go over to the gameplay, where I'll show you the best way to play this build. And as we already looked into the Ice Gauntlet twice, I will just skip that part for now, and we will move straight for the second weapon, which is the Fire Staff. And the first Q spell is called the Burnout, which is a big dash spell which you can use for mobility. Or if you hit enemies while dashing, they will take extra burn damage. Then the second ability is called the Pillar of Fire. I usually use it only on grouped up players and never in a 1v1, because it will deal decent damage, but you have to stand still for a second while casting the spell. And by doing that, you become one to the enemy shots, so basically only use the spell in group PvP or PvE. And then a quick trick on how to reduce the casting time, so what you want to do is right after using the spell, do one dodge roll, and this will stop the animation at around 50-70%, to 70%, which means that you'll be able to use the ability, but give you faster casting time. And then lastly we have the F ability called Fireball, which is very powerful damage spell, that makes the ground burn for a few seconds afterwards, so you can just aim it at the ground where the target is standing on and it will damage him as well. So then as far as your ability combinations go, 
show for the ice gauntlet, what you want to do is place the ice storm ability on grouped up enemies, and if you see an enemy stunned, then use the ice spike ability and do a bunch of damage. Or another way to set up your ice spike ability is to run into the enemy and place the ice shower spell, and if the enemy touches the ice wall, he will get stunned. So then you can use the ice spikes and it will be easier to hit the enemy. Then of course, as far as your fire staff abilities go, use your fireball and pillar of fire on grouped up enemies. And then to run away from a player or run towards them, use the burnout ability. And especially in wars and outpost rush, the spell is really good because when you use it and it dashes, it will do damage to all players that you just dash through. So you can easily one shot your enemies and get the last hit to get the kill if they are just 30% health. So with all this said, now let's go over my final conclusions for this build. This ice gauntlet and fire stuff weapon combination was nerfed, but it still does bunch of damage and it's very good as a mage class. And then last but not the least, for the ice gauntlet you want to use the malachi the gem then for your fire staff get the opal gem and then for all of your gear amulets rings and everything else use the enix gems and then again like i already explained to find out the best weapon and gear perks watch this video which is titled which weapon and gear perks are the best for your build you can find the link in this video's description or just scroll through my channel so if you're still looking for one of the best and most dps builds for a mage class then these are the best weapons for you so have fun and that's about it. So, I really do appreciate everyone for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions, feedback or other good Ice Gauntlet builds that you would like to see in the next video, then feel free to leave your comments in the comment section down below. And while you're doing that, please click like, subscribe and enable that notification bell, so this way you could support the channel and you won't miss any more amazing content from me. With all this said, you have an amazing day and I'll catch you in my next video. So take it easy, peace.